So welcome everyone to the BA Theatre Design course introduction. I'm Lucy Algar. I'm the course leader of the BA Theatre Design course at Wimbledon. I'm joined by Amelia today, um, Amelia Kiriaku, who's one of our third year students. Hello. <laughs> um, and later on, uh, Amelia will be sharing her experiences of being on the course. So um, yeah, moving on. Um, when I joined uh, Wimbledon back in 2013, um, really thrilled to have been course leader for now, this is my 11th year, really um, excited to uh, work with such amazing students. The uh, sort of phrase that I used when I was interviewed for this job is that creating confident collaborators and communicators. And I really think that that ultimately is my job on this course to ensure that the students are confident collaborators and communicators when they're working with other theatre makers. Next slide, please. So here you can see, um, you know, uh, welcome from us both, um, a slide of a uh, earlier, uh, so back in September, in the first week when the uh, first years had just joined us, I ran one of my big drawing performance workshops. So this is a photograph of us, <coughs> excuse me, outside the college with um, some of the third years and some of the first years um, at the end of a workshop. So you can see what college looks like there. So next slide, please. Um, why UAL? So University of the Arts is the largest specialist arts university in Europe, and it ranks in the top two universities in the world for art and design um, and has done so now for, I think, five years. Um, within the university, you've got a network of over 20,000 creative students. But of course, that network extends to people that you'll meet, exchange students you might meet on the course and um, another uh, collaborators from other institutions. This course particularly works with other institutions, and I'll talk more about that later. So all of the staff on the course are practicing professionals in the field of theatre design and all of our associate lecturers as well. We have a range of designers and other theatre makers, writers, etc., who work with us. Um, I'm very excited that, for instance, this coming Friday, we have Nat Price, who is a really fantastic uh, costume designer and set designer who trained on the course and she's coming to give a talk. So, again, this shows that we have great links with industry and excellent progression into careers within uh, within theatre design. Nat has recently designed the costumes for Vanya with Andrew Scott in the West End. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So what is BA Theatre Design? So ultimately, we are about designing for any aspect of live performance. So um, sometimes students will go on from this course to work in film and other areas, but primarily we are about live performance, but it is a course that can prepare you for any kind of set and costume design. We also look at sound and lighting and projection design. Um, and for instance, this morning, the third years are working with our fantastic um, sound uh, technician to, to invent new ways of working with sound in the theatre. So Although we focus primarily on set and costume design, these other areas are all covered. And we have had students leaving, um, for instance, Jung Jung Chang. He's now one of the top creative technologists in both Seoul and London. So the range of careers that you can go on to, and this prepares you for. The image there is from a show that Scott um, designed for our London Contemporary Dance um, School uh, design collaborations. Next slide, please. So why theatre design at Wimbledon? Well, uh, now that we're a school of performance, we've got an incredibly exciting industry uh, relevant mix of courses and collaborators to work alongside and with. And the course has a, you know, theatre design has a long and impressive history of educating top um, designers. Um, it, the course has been at Wimbledon since the 1930s, which is an extraordinarily long uh, time. And it's, uh, the range of designers that have come out of this course, I'm just thinking about Raja Shakiri, Richard Hudson, you know, such a mix of, of designers who've trained at Wimbledon. Um, and as I say, Nat Price is coming this Friday. Then on the 1st of December, we have um, James Perkins and Vicky Smart coming to talk to students who um, they both trained at Wimbledon and they've designing Cinderella for the lyric in Hammersmith at the moment. And um, Tom Pye, um, who has designed... Uh, Totoro for the RSC that's about to open at the Barbican. He uh, also trained at Wimbledon and came recently to give a talk. Um, 
the other um you know we we are create opportunities for you to design and make live shows at Wimbledon and at our external collaborators venues and I'll explain more about that later we also want to talk about the wonderfully supportive community at BA Theatre Design. This is our um, Instagram link, and there you can see uh, so many uh, images from our work. Um, but within our studios at Wimbledon and with the greater mix of workshops, technical workshops, and even the canteen, the library, there's a really strong community at Wimbledon. And I'm really, um, you know, I feel very privileged to be part of it. Um, the core themes of sustainability, decolonization and making materiality are right at the heart of the course. So thinking uh, yesterday when we were working on uh, looking at building the sets, we were constantly referring to, you know, where have the materials come from? Where are they going afterwards? So thinking about the materials we're using and how we're using them in uh, in this climate period of climate change. So next slide, please. Course overview. Um, so yes, the first year is primarily about learning the core skills. So at the moment, the first years are working on their first model making project. They work move forward on the 4th of December to a costume design project with me. And then that will um, culminate in a um, costume show. So they will get to make some of the designs um, that will be on the 1st of February. So this is a constant sort of making a, a materiality experience with both model making and costume. And then they move forward to um, unit three, which will be about designing a whole design proposal of set costume and other ideas sound related to projection etc for um a show as if it were going to the lyric in hammersmith so they will make a 1 to 25 scale model of the lyric in hammersmith in the second year it's really a time when sophie jump who is our um uh senior lecturer and a unit leader for the second year she enables the students to look at the breadth of theatre design sophie is a world authority on theatre design and was a judge at the recent um prague quadrennial so her um teaching on that um uh, course within the, the all of the aspects of the second year it really broadens the students understanding of what theatre design can be where theatre can take place etc in the third year, it's about building towards independent practice so that um, by the June, when you graduate, you are ready to go forward into your careers to um, apply for the Limbury Prize, etc. The um, first part of the third year is when the students um, work on their creative research project, the dissertation, and also their live design project, which are with um, other institutions. Um, but this and then the second part with unit 10 is when they can work on their um, own project, a speculative project, but they can design whatever they want, whether it's a one to one intimate show or as if they were designing for the Olympics. There are speculative projects where they make models and we show all of that at the degree show, which will be mid June next year. So please come to our degree show next June. Um, the image here is of some work. Um, on the previous slide of Jung Jung Chang. So as I say, he's a creative technologist now, and this is him working with some of his experiments. He's coming back into college on the 24th of November to work with um, our students and explain about his practice. So constantly I were bringing in uh, um, ex-students, graduates, and also um, we're going to be working with Leon Barker, our new re reader in performance um, when we meet on the 24th. So there's such a range of different staff that the students on the course can meet. Um, thank you, next slide. Um, I also like to add here a little bit about our lovely studios. They are really light, bright spaces that um, uh, give the students a real sense of belonging. In the third years, they have their own desk spaces. And you can see in the bottom picture there, um, Glenn Neath, one of our associate lecturers, giving a tutorial to a student at her desk. So these spaces offer um, discursive uh, making spaces. And I really um, love having these, student, these um, studios. So please come and see for yourself this Saturday, the 18th of November, um, when the studios will be open. And I know that there are campus tours. If you can't make that, you can book for campus tours at other times. Next slide, please. So the range of units throughout the course. I've talked a little bit about the first year, which is units one to four. Um, so different range of um, model making, costume, exploring ideas, digital processes. And then um, units five to eight are the second year. So I'm um, going straight into a site specific theater project 
Um, uh, this year that focused on the Jocelyn Herbert archive at the National Theatre. So Sophie led a project there. Um, and now the students are working on Unit 6, which is the collaboration and research project when, in which students can work with, uh, combine with students from all the other courses at, um, at Wimbledon. So that's a, a way of opening up their network and understanding of different ways of, of making. Um, Unit 7 is a design from script um, and they make devised live shows. So that um, uh, it usually is a Shakespeare project. And then in Unit 8, the same play, whichever Shakespeare it is, um, you, the students get to design uh, a speculative outcome, usually for the Dorfman Theatre, so that we can um, give them the opportunities to work both collaboratively and independently. Um, this is something very specific about the, being a theatre designer that you need to be able to do both, to focus on work on your own and then really work um, extensively as a collaborator. This, of course, leads into our live collaborations in Unit 9. So um, uh, 10 of our students are collaborating with London Contemporary Dance School choreographers and dancers. And those shows will be at The Place in London, um, which is it's called The Place. It's at London Contemporary Dance School. And those are on the 7th and 8th of December. If you can join us to see those, that would be a wonderful way to see the work of our third year students. We also have uh, collaborations with Middlesex University Dance Department, in-house collaborations um, at Wimbledon for the third year. And then also uh, 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 one of our headline collaborations, which is with the Lyric Theatre in Hammersmith. So four of our students, including Amelia, will be designing shows which will take place um, in March, first at Wimbledon and then at uh, the Lyric in Hammersmith. That project has been running since 2016 and it's one I'm very proud of. The collaboration with London Contemporary Dance School has run for nearly 30 years. So that's really amazing to have a course that connects both with um, uh, theatre making at an institution like the Lyric and also with London Contemporary Dance School. Unit 10, as I mentioned earlier, is their independent project where they can uh, choose whichever text or opera or um, live festival or whatever that does, live performance is that they want to design a speculative proposal for. Um, and as I say, you can see that that work will be shown at our degree show in June. So next slide, please. So my research um, focus and research and practice focus is drawing in relation to live performance. So I've run my drawing performance project now um, for a long, long time. And um, students uh, very much get involved with working with live performance. In this case, uh, Chihiro, this images of Chihiro Kawasaki and Kirill Berloff, who I've worked with since 20. 16 on this drawing performance project so do have a look at the instagram there um drawing is ultimately the core process by which uh uh theater designers might develop and communicate ideas but whether those are digital drawings or analog ones it's one of our core ways of communicating our ideas so next slide please um, and to lead on to that, um, a few years back, the Marcus Beale Architect Practice gave us a drawing prize, which was won ultimately by um, Yung Jung Chang, who is Vitacrete on Instagram, for his digital drawing work, which you can see on the far right of the screen. But the other ways that students are drawing on this course, as I say, this mix of analog and digital, you can see some... Um, examples of that here. The image on the far left, the costume design is by Ruth Badia, who is currently the um, Max Rain um, design assistant at the National Theatre. And she's just been given the opportunity to design the set for the Black British Theatre Awards, which recently took place at the National. Um, so next slide, please. Ray Smith, um, through the uh, COVID period, was a drawing fellow with us. So we're really excited that we have, um, you know, Ray has worked with us. Ray's an absolutely international award-winning designer who designed War Horse and other um, amazing shows, all sorts of shows. Um, but her work with us has, um, you know, built on our uh, focus on drawing as key uh, communication skill. So um, next slide, please. Um, internally at Wimbledon, we have the opportunity to work with a whole range of other courses, whether that's acting and performance, a costume course, production arts for screen, technical arts for theatre, an MA theatre and performance design. And also we've just opened an MA puppetry course, which I'm, uh, you know, I've, I know already some of our second years are very keen to go on to that when they leave, because we um, partly when they were in the first year, we ran a, a puppet project at the end of the first year last June. So it, this range of um, 
the mix of collaborators that uh, Wimbledon uh, gives you the opportunity to meet is really extraordinary. So um, that's the range of internal collaborators. The next slide shows us the range of external collaborators. And I think I've just mentioned some of those. I also mentioned the MA Theatre Directing course at Birkbeck. So now for uh, nearly 10 years, we have a summer project with the MA Theatre Directors at Birkbeck. Um, and then also back in uh, June of 22, we uh, were approached by the National Theatre, Paul Handley, who's the, the um, uh, you know, the, the, the director of um, um, production management and technical theatre at the National. He invited us to make a, an installation space for Making Theatre Green, which was a one day sort of symposium and event about sustainability in theatre design. Um, so moving forward, please. Um, it's lovely to share with you the fact that um, we've been supported very uh, well recently by the international team at UAL and been able to um, facilitate build on our international collaborations. I have a very um, close collaboration uh, with uh, dancer and choreographer Hyung Min Kim, who teaches at K Arts in Seoul. So the week before last, I was joined by four students from the second year um, on a trip for a week to Seoul to meet um, uh, collaborators there within the dance department and within the stage design department there. So that was a really extraordinary opportunity. And you can see um, images there of the um, uh, work we did there. So next slide, please. So yes, a couple more pictures from our trip to Seoul. Um, on the left, there's a picture of me with a range of um, our graduates. So Korean graduates, alumni joined us for a meal with the four students. So that was a fascinating, and it was really wonderful to catch up with them all and build on our uh, community of theater designers there. And then we also have the slide on the right, which was um, the joyful moment that we were all at the end of, um, or partway through actually, one of our workshops out there. So next slide, please. So we were also able to go supported by the international team this summer to the Prague Quadrennial. And I know Amelia will mention her part in that uh, later in this. Um, so I was selected by the Prague Quadrennial team to run a three day drawing performance workshop, which was a huge, fantastic opportunity to bring my drawing practice and understanding of performance to a range of participants from across the globe. Um, so that was a great opportunity and to bring that energy back into the course so that the students understand there is this sense of working within the UK, but beyond um, is also open to us. So next slide, please. Um, yes, here's a couple of images from Making Theatre Green in June 2022, when the students um, created this installation, which we had to install very swiftly, but they'd made all these beautiful hangings, all from recycled materials to um, create this sort of conversation hub at that event. So there's a picture of them with their wonderful puppet as well in that um, space. Uh, next slide, please. I know there's one more slide of that um, event. So as you see, it became this wonderful uh, discursive space um, to talk about the issues of the day and um, the blackboards that we installed as part of that um, with some of the quotes that the students have come up with. And I love this quote, explore sustainability as a challenge, not a limitation. So really encouraging students to think uh, broadly about how this uh, the challenges of sustainability affect our practice. Next slide, please. So yes, I've just got a couple of slides in here um, to talk about model making. Um, so digitally model making is very much um, there as well, uh, but also still the key skill of hand making models, one to 25 scale models usually, but sometimes one to 50 and sometimes one to 100. Um, if it's a big space like the um, one on the right there, which is a performance space um, used uh, sort of laser cut model from the Barbican that was made by Enza, one of our students who uh, recently graduated. Um, and the one on the left is by Demi. So um, just showing you a couple of um, images there from our model making. Next slide, please. So within the course, there are other opportunities to do work experiences, um, work placements within the second year. And then between the second and third year, you can go um, and do a year's diploma at the Creative Computing Institute, which is based in Camberwell. That's a fantastic opportunity as um, 
uh, computing and coding and how that will affect our practice. So I think that's a great opportunity for students to do that. And then you can also, between second and third year, do a diploma in professional studies. So it gives you the opportunity to um, do work experience with other companies in industry and then come back for a fourth um, and final year. And as I've said, you can also, um, you know, we're keeping, uh, making sure that we keep building on our exchange program. So my trip to Seoul was partly to do that, to ensure that students can now um, go on exchanges with 2K Arts, um, as well as about eight or 10 other places across uh, Europe and beyond that you can go and do exchanges. And of course, the students from those um, other institutions come to us. So last year, our last second year, we had eight different exchange students. And I, at the moment, I think we've got about, we've got two with us at the moment, and I've just agreed for another four or five to come next term. So we are really a sought after exchange uh, participant, and um, it's very exciting when students can go abroad for theirs. Um, next slide, please. So it's a bit here about recent graduates. Um, and if you are sent this uh, presentation as a PDF, you will be able to click on those links. Uh, I'll just briefly mention a couple. So Naomi Cook Cohen is working with us as a, a lecturer now, but she designed iJoan at the Globe and has currently uh, got a show on called The Flea at the Yard Theatre. She, I know, actually, she's away at the moment in Vancouver with one of the shows that she's um, that has 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 gone over there. Uh, Niall McKeever, his work at the moment, for instance, he's just designed Peter Pan for the Gate Theatre in Dublin. So if you're in Ireland, you can go and see that. And then Ruth Vadir and Pip Terry were both winners of the 2021 Limbury Prize and became associate designers at the Kiln. And Ruth has then gone on to uh, work for a year as an assistant designer at the National Theatre. And Pip has been working with other designers, including um, very high profile designers, Tom Piper, uh, she assisted him on the, uh, some shows at the Royal Shakespeare Company. And this has also assisted Anna Fleischel on, on The Time Traveller's Wife, which just opened in the West End. Thank you. Next slide, please. So here's just a joyful photo. Thinking of our community of practice, the wonderful celebrations that we get to when we uh, reach uh, the graduation ceremonies at the Festival Hall in uh, July every year. So here's last summer celebration with some of the graduates, um, the 2023 graduates, just the sense that you, once you become part of this course, you are uh, part of our community of practice and lots of, um, for instance, with Sonia Smullen, who graduated in 2022, she's now teaching on the course um, uh, as a, you know, right at the beginning of her, her career, but she's out working. So we have this community of practice that you become part of, and that um, feels, a, creates a good, a great sense of belonging to the um, industry. And as I say, I've been emailed this morning by Tom Pye um, about something to do with uh, Totoro. So, you know, the opportunities that this affords, it cannot be underestimated. Um, next slide, please. So a couple more things about graduates. So Sutra Gilmore, um, uh, so this is her Avita from Regent's Park, but um, the range of her work, whether it was, um, you know, is huge. So she's worth looking up. And then um, also it's always important to include Richard. So the next slide is of Richard Hudson, um, who, so he is uh, a designer. Please, next slide, please. Uh, so Richard um, designed the set for uh, The Lion King. Julie Taymor directed it and designed the costumes, but Richard worked on the set. And he is an absolutely international designer of operas and, and much, much more. Um, um, yeah, so next slide, please. Oh, yes, I've mentioned Tom. So Tom came in recently to um, give us a, a talk about his amazing work um, and he's incredibly supportive. And then Nat Price and Good Teeth Theatre are coming soon. And next term, I've just asked uh, Lizzie Clacken if she will be able to come, um, if she can come and talk to us. So next slide, please. Yeah, careers. So the range of careers, although the focus was primary, is primarily on live performance design. It, 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 lots of students go on to work in production design for film and TV, for fashion art direction. So um, uh, Rania El-Rafay is a student who's working now at the top of her game as an art director for uh, 
pop promos and commercials and so on. And then Patience Harding, who left in 2014, is that you know what at the top of her game again, working with Harry Styles and in in a lot of fashion art direction. And um, uh, one of our students, she recently asked me, and a student went to an ex a graduate has gone to work with her model making. So again, this mix of um, avenues that students can go into. Um, uh, uh, Creative technologist So Young Jung Chang has been working both in London and Seoul. He recently worked on the lighting and projection for the Seoul Light Festival, um, but he's back in London now and joining us on the 24th, I know, 24th of November. He will be with us talking about his work. So this range of careers that can people can go on to. Thank you. Next slide, please. So just a, a little resume there of the course staff. So that's me, Lucy, I'm the course leader. Sophie Jump is our senior lecturer. And we've recently been joined by Max Johns, um, fantastic designer as our lecturer. So he's working primarily with our first years, but we'll, we all work across the course. We also have Dick Straker, who is um, uh, our lecturer for all sorts of digital projection. He works um, uh with his company Mesmer and then teaches with us. And then there's a whole range of associate lecturers, too many to mention there. Um, I might mention though, Glenn Neath, who has, was working with us yesterday, who uh, with his company Darkfield, it, he's primarily a writer, but he brings such a range of wisdom and experience about theater making that he works with us a lot. Um, next slide, please. So yeah, I think I've alluded to uh, the range of our industry engagement through talks and workshops and networking events and live, um, you know, events, uh, live briefs su such as the project where we work with the young directors from the Lyric Theatre in Hammersmith. So ensuring that at all stages of the course, there is a sense that you are both part of a student community of practice, but it is part of a wider industry community uh, within theatre design. And so these opportunities to meet uh, international designers and to go and work, you know, work with them. Um, so that is constantly our focus to ensure that students get to build their careers in this, you know, we're not denying that it's a complex and challenging and competitive world to go on to, but we feel that we're working absolutely uh, as, as hard as we can to ensure that students have all of the skills and the tenacity required to go forward to a career in this fascinating area. Next slide, please. So what are we looking for? The personal statement, uh, when I'm looking at personal statements, I just love to see a passion for something. Not all of our applicants will have been lucky enough to see as much theatre as they might have liked to. So again, I love to hear that you've been interested in something, uh, whether that's making sculpture or, um, you know, even even uh, hiking or, you know, whatever it is, just show that you have a desire to learn and to to um uh, drive yourself independently I think we also but uh, of course it's difficult at 18 or 19 to be doing that so we're well aware that students will need support so um, that's also what we provide the portfolio is um, again within that I love to see a range of work it doesn't all have to be related to theatre a little bit would be nice but it's not essential again it's really important that your portfolio shows a range of uh, 2D and 3D work um, and then we have a short interview. Um, uh, we will meet you online for your interview uh, to have a chat. Uh, for those interviews, I read the personal statement and look at the portfolios in advance. And then I will share my screen during the interview so that you can talk to me about your work. Um, thank you. Next slide, please. So the next steps, start your application and visit us uh, for the open day on the Saturday, the 18th of November. And if possible, uh, if you can't come to that, then you can come to our, our campus tours. So next slide, please. Thank you so much for listening to me for that. I will pass you over now to Amelia for her um, part of the presentation. Thank you so much. Hello. Um, uh, as we mentioned, my name is Amelia. I am currently a third year on the theatre design course. Um, and I have uh, a bit of a presentation to show you sort of what I've been up to um, in the past two and a bit years, the work that I've been doing. I'm just going to so, open it now for you. Just, just cool. confirm when you see it, that would be great.
be able to see it now. Yeah, I've got it. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So as I mentioned, those things. Uh, cool. So straight into first year. As Lucy mentioned, um, first year is very much building a groundwork of theatre design skills. So um, this project was our first model making project. Um, it was, we sort of um, learned kind of how it works to go and find a space and measure it. Um, we learned technical drawings. So this one is a hand-drawn technical drawing, um, but we also learned digital um, and, you know, different people prefer different things or different applications prefer different things. Um, yeah, and it was just a general introduction to model making techniques. So the scale, the texturing, um, different materials you might want to use, different techniques. Um, yeah, and that's what this project was all about. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and again, as Lucy mentioned, some of the first years will be working on this soon. Um, the costume design and make project. So um, again, an introduction to what that entails um, and also an introduction to group work. So what happened during this project is that everybody designed um, the costumes for a play that we were given, everybody in the class. And then um, a handful of those designs were dis were chosen to be made into real costumes. Um, and we were put into groups to make other people's costumes. So we weren't allowed to make our own. Um, and these photos are just a little bit of process of the way that I chose to do my costume designs. I honestly don't always do them in the same way. These ones happen to be very painty and pastel -y. Um, Sometimes I do ink and then digital. Sometimes I do all sorts of things collage um yeah so it was it's quite a broad a broad introduction um and you get to do fun costume things next slide please okay cool so um i was actually very lucky that one of my costumes got chosen to be made into a real thing so the drawing on the left is the the final costume design that i presented but then obviously because people needed to make it, I had to provide them with a back view, which is what that second drawing is, and some notes about what I imagined it would be like. And so that process was very much um, like this big um, communication between me and the pe people who were making my costume, um, where, you know, I, I would give them as much information as I had or, or I had thought of and they would bring me their interpretation of what that would be and so this bottom right image is um, one of my classmates modeling that costume um, next slide please and so on the other side of that I was also um, making with my team with my group of um, peers um, this costume which was designed by one of our classmates um, the cool thing about this was that um, because some people are quite free with with allowing you to interpret their costume designs, but either way, there's always things that will play to different people's strengths. So, for example, as you can see, I've got quite a lot of process images of this tunic, and that's because I actually spent 20 hours texturing and sewing on this tunic, um, which is not something that you have to do if you're not comfortable with it or you're not if it's not something you want to be doing. But um, I was interested in going through that process, and so I did. Um, but yeah, so different people contributed different parts of the outfit. Um, and then at the end, we did this um, photo shoot. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a quick video of how that costume show turned out. So it was kind of like fashion show meets mini performance, where the um, characters were sort of walking among small groups of audience. Cool. Um, on to some things that I did in my second year. Um, first project was the bread shop. Um, so for me, 
maybe not for other people, but for me, this was my first proper introduction to site-specific theatre, um, as Lucy mentioned. Sophie Jump is um, brilliant at um, those sorts of types of theatre. Um, so for this one, we went to a site, a town hall in East London. Um, we took photos and measurements of the rooms because we knew that this this play in our kind of um in our kind of design proposal because it, it wasn't going to be made into a real um show um we knew it was going to be set in that building and for my group it was super super important that that building was a central part of what we were putting in it um and as i said sort of we we very much could play to our strengths in this one too so um, in these images on the right, we have some furniture, so the chest of drawers that I made, and then all of those windows that a classmate um, kind of painted. Um, and then at the bottom, um, a structure that one of my other teammates um, came up with. Um, and that whole big room was built by, one yet again, one of my other teammates, um, while the uh, the final member of our group was designing costumes so it was very much um a bring your strengths to the table um and not, and this was um a really really great collaboration for me and really interesting to to um because in research you sometimes have to have to decide what angle is interesting to you um, whereas with this, because the site was so important, we got to research what um, the the place that we were setting it in and um, sort of how we wanted to link that to the play. And it was really interesting. Um, yeah. So next slide, please. Um, yeah, again, so this is some more process of of that one room. We actually built all we actually built five rooms in this building um, for our design proposal. But this was sort of the main, the main busy one. Um, and as I mentioned, all of that furniture plus that structure, um, I took those and stuck them on because we wanted this big wood pile that audience could walk in amongst and um, performers could climb on. And we had, um, you can kind of see it in the top right, this hanging bread that we also made. Um, and it was just a, a really great project that I really loved. Um, next slide, please. Um, again, as Lucy mentioned, I was really, really lucky. Um, two of my projects got selected to go to the Prague Quadrennial. The bread shop was one of them. Uh, so we were in this um sort of student exhibition with a bunch of other students from around the world, um, who had also gotten to be part of this exhibition with their design proposals for different shows. Um, and so we set up this exhibition um, and we got to sort of talk about it, present about it and get feedback for, from some industry um, kind of professionals um, and to have questions from our peers from all around the world. So that was an amazing opportunity um, and really interesting to get to take part of that design proposal into a different theatre design uh, context. Um, next slide, please. Um, okay, again, unit six, which is, as Lucy mentioned, the cross-course collaboration. Um, so the one that I, the project that I um, got put on, that I chose to be on, was um, a, uh, a devised performance. So we had a book, and as a group, uh, we devised a show out of it. Uh, so in my group, there were um, contemporary theatre um, students, so um, performers, directors, writers, um, some people who were interested in sound design, myself, um, some costume designers, and one other theatre designer. Um, the cool thing about this project is that because it's cross-course collaboration, not only do you get to bring your own strengths, but you can also, in in some in some cases and in some ways, if you want to, um, sort of learn other skills that that normally other courses would be doing more than you would be. Um, 
So again, this was one of my favorite collaborations of last year. Um, the it was um another sort of um site specific theater performance. The one that I did, we were working with headphone theater, so a lot of sound design and walking performance. Um, the images here are of something that I contributed, which are these mirror masks, and this is just a bit of process, um, all the way down to the um the final sort of performance along with some costume designs um that you can see so the, the costume that we kind of put together um next slide please um these are some more images of that performance um we performed it in twickenham on eel pie island which was um which we made again super relevant to the um kind of story that we devised next slide please uh, yeah, and so not only did I get to perform um, Memory Police here during the, the project, but we got to take that project further because it also got to go to the Prague Quadrennial. Um, so we performed it in a park there. Um, what what that entailed was taking all of the elements that we had made and and um, transporting them to Prague and then recontextualizing it, kind of um, figuring out where those sorts of um what that show would be like in a different place um and it was a really great opportunity because obviously we do projects here at uni and, and then they finish and you don't necessarily always get to take them further but sometimes you might want to um i mean it's definitely something that people can do independently too but this was just an amazing opportunity that we were supported to take it further and it really, I think, transformed into something stronger than it even had been in the first place. Um, yeah, so that was um, an amazing opportunity that we were supported um, by the uni to get to do. Next slide, please. I think this is just some more, yeah, production shots. So that bottom one is is um, me with an audience member taking a photo of, um, I guess, their own reflection in my face. Um, Next slide again, please. Cool. Um, super crucial. It's spoken about a lot in the context of theater, um, which is networking. I've put making friends first here um, because all of these people and all of these pictures are people I'm friends with, people that are very important to me, um, who I've met through getting to collaborate with them, which is um, amazing. Um, of course, of course, making connections with people is crucial in any area of life. Um, but you sort of get to a stage, I certainly have, where I got here and I realized, actually, um, even though it's very competitive, even though, of course, that there are big aspirational things to be going for, the theater world is is quite small. Like once you're in a once you're in a room with people, everybody um is gonna, know that you deserve to be there and you're going to meet loads of people um but i also think on the flip side of that that it's super important to just for your personal life make connections with people um you know i think rather than approaching people wanting to further your career most of these people i'm friends with and they help me um with my creativity just because um, I get to talk to them and we have shared interests or they might have things they suggest to me that I had never thought about before or I can bounce ideas off of them and yeah really that is like a a personal thing first before it's before it's a professional thing and I think that's really important um yeah um next slide please cool so um as Lucy mentioned yet again um uh the current project that i'm working on is um one of the plays for evolution festival at the lyric in hammersmith um so what that entails for me at the moment is um i'm working with a professional director um we're designing and i'm essentially you know designing model boxing and then building the show so costumes and set um and it's very reflective of working professional professionally 
um it's not just anything this is like a show that has my name attached to it that is going to be put on in a real theater um and that is an amazing opportunity um uh and there's lots of really cool um connections to be made there i also was was um i also got to stage crew um in my first year and my second year um for the third years who were doing this project so it's really um nice to get to see it to get the chance to to be the designer on the other side of that to be trusted to do that um yeah so this image is just a collage that i um presented um in my proposal that i did at the lyric um last last week um of perhaps what the stage might look like or some references um yeah, so that's something that I'm currently in the process of designing that will be um, performed in March. Uh, next slide. Cool. <clears throat> so um, I have some slides of images that I had in my portfolio. To my understanding, the way that um, you will have to uh, present your work for your interview and stuff is different than how I did it. I had a physical portfolio. I don't think that's how it's done anymore, but um, hopefully maybe these images will give you a sense of sort of where I was at before I came here and what I kind of showed. Um, so like it says on the slide, I happened to do a lot of community theater, but that just happened to be my pathway in. There are lots of people people in my class, people from past years who didn't have that opportunity necessarily, but have been able to show their other pathways into theatre design. Um, yeah, so this is a bunch of props and some set that I designed or made or painted um, for past productions that I did. Next slide, please. Um, this is some college work that I that I put in my portfolio. So like I say here, I, I really didn't have very much understanding of how um, model making and stuff really worked. I sort of had the kind of um, sense of it, but I was on a fine art course. And so it was whatever people could sort of guide me with at that stage, which was not very much. Um, but so these images are just some sketch models that I had, some final pieces of from college. Um, just to give a sense that I kind of had, had was interested in in learning those things, I guess. Um, yeah, but but please don't worry if if that's not something that you've done lots of at this stage. Um, next slide, please. Cool. Um, and so this is just a few pages that I had in there of um, sketchbooks, life drawings um some various different projects so some of these are like finished drawings some of them are just little sketches um in the top left is a um set design that i did with my community theater group um and then some some um different kinds of sketches some life drawings that i'm proud of which i think is also something that is asked of you um yeah but it was it's very much sort of the kind of work that I had been doing at college um, that I sort of chose to present. Um, and yeah, I know that obviously the way that you will have to present is different than me, but I hope that maybe some of these images give you a little bit of a sense of what you might want to um, uh, give to uh, in, in like a, in a portfolio. Um, cool. So yeah, I'm done.